Once you're all signed up with Figma and you're logged in and everything, it'll drop you here into this front page, which can be a little bit overwhelming. Fortunately for you, you won't actually have to deal with this page too much when it comes to using the Figma design files that we give you at Scrimba. And let me show you why. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and close this page. And what I have open is an example of a slide in a Scrimba course, which has a link that will lead you directly to the Figma design file. So when you click it, it'll open you to a page that's just a redirect page. You'll go ahead and click the link at the top there, and that will open you to the Figma design file. We're gonna talk about the interface that you see here, the layers, this inspect panel over to the right. But before any of that, I want you to notice that there is this ask to edit button, and I do not want you to click that ask to edit button. The reason is any edits that you make actually make edits to the master file that everyone gets to see. And in truth, like I'll be talking about soon, I personally find this view only mode a lot easier to use as a developer because then I don't have to worry that if I click somewhere and start dragging that I'm actually going to be breaking anything. Instead, all I have is the ability to inspect the elements that are on the page, and I won't be able to move anything out of its place or anything like that. So don't bother to click this ask to edit button because I'm just going to ignore any requests that come in. However, something to notice is that you'll be able to see the cursors of anybody else that is currently viewing this file. I'm logged in under another account so you can see here, but as I'm working in this file, you can see that moving around, selecting things, that can all be fairly distracting when you're just really trying to pay attention to what's there. Fortunately, there's a pretty easy way around this. If you go to the zoom window in the upper right, there's the options there as well, and down at the bottom, you can turn off multiplayer cursors. Of course, there's a shortcut for it as well. I'll turn this off and suddenly I essentially have a private view. Other people will still be able to see my cursor if they haven't turned this off, but at least I won't be distracted by other people. And because there are a good number of Scrimba students, it's not uncommon for there to be a dozen or more people all working within the same file. So turning off multiplayer cursors is just really a good practice. Now, personally, if I'm on the receiving end of a design like this, I prefer to stay in view only mode, like I mentioned, so I can't screw something up by dragging it out of place. However, if you do decide you want to make your own design tweaks to this file, you can click on the drop down arrow next to the title of this Figma file and click duplicate to your drafts. Putting this in your drafts will essentially make a copy of it. Down here, you can just click the open button to get there really quickly. And now I do have edit access to things and I can move things around, change colors, change fonts, whatever I wanna change. Okay, with that behind us, let's move forward and take a quick tour of Figma in general so we can understand how, as developers, we can best make use of the Figma program. When you're using Figma as a developer to build a design in code, one of the most important things is to learn how to select the correct thing on the page. Let me zoom into this first option here and let's assume that what we wanna do is figure out what color this text front end developer is. Fortunately, all I really need to do is click on it and you'll see that on the right side, we have a lot of additional information that is given to us through Figma. Much of this will just make intuitive sense. You can see under typography exactly which font we're using, what the font weight is, the font size, the line height, and everything else. Down here with colors, I can also see exactly what color this text is. And fortunately, I can just click this copy button and that will copy to the clipboard the hex value of this color. That makes it really easy to then just go over to my CSS and to make changes there. Speaking of CSS, if I scroll a little bit further down, you'll see that it even provides us some CSS code that we could copy and paste into our code. However, I want you to be careful about using this because as you can see, it's going to position everything absolutely, at least in this specific design. And well, you're not gonna to wanna to use absolute positioning for things like this. However, having things like the font family, the font size, the line height, and the color, these are all really nice things to have. So oftentimes what I'll find myself doing is just copying a bunch of these styles, pasting them into my CSS, and then deleting the ones that I don't actually need. You'll also notice that in the design, sometimes the sizes are not absolutely perfect. And that's just because of the way that you create text elements in Figma. But for example, when it says font size 12.8 pixels, usually as a developer, I will just round that up to 13 so that I can have some relatively sane values for my font sizes and padding and so forth. 
Another very useful thing to know as a developer is to see what the spacing is between elements on the page. For example, we have this about header down here and it is set a certain distance below the buttons like email and LinkedIn. And this amount of space is probably something that needs to be intentional. It's not just the natural padding or rather margin that comes with this level of header, which means in our CSS, we will need to add some manual spacing below our buttons, or I guess you could say above the about header for that spacing to be correct. Fortunately in Figma, it's really easy to discover what the spacing is between elements on the page. All you need to do is click one of the elements, let's say the button, and then hover your mouse over different parts of the page. So you can see that the about header is about 33 pixels below the email button. Now this may not be absolutely perfect. You can see there's a little bit of extra space above the top of my words and the actual box that's containing my words, but at least I know a ballpark of what this distance should be. Also, I can click into the individual elements of my button and see the spacing in there as well. This is about 10 pixels between the icon and the word email. Or I can click the word email and go to the edge and see that there's about 9 pixels of padding from within the button on the top and bottom and about 30 pixels on the left and I assume the right as well. While I'm here, if I click on the button, it will show me what the height and width of the button is. We see in the blue box below, it's 115 pixels wide and 34 pixels high. Then of course, I can click on this button and put my mouse over to this button and see that there are 17 pixels between the two buttons. Now, one word of advice as a developer looking at a Figma design, for the most part, you won't need to worry about being absolutely pixel perfect. In fact, if you look closely at the design, I'll click on this image and hover over here. You can see that on the left, it says there's 116 pixels of space. However, on the right, it says there's 117 pixels of space. This is a negligible amount, and I truly wouldn't be too concerned about putting it in exactly that position. So between using your mouse to select elements and look at the inspect area over here, and also using it to determine what the spacing is between elements, you should have a really solid foundation for using Figma as a developer to build the design that you see. We've seen how we can inspect certain aspects or properties of elements that we see on the page through this inspect panel, but now let's see how we can actually export or save some of the assets that we see on the page. For example, we have these social media icons which we won't want to recreate in code, and so instead we want to export them as a PNG that we can put into our own file explorer of our code base and reference them as images. To export an asset like this from Figma, you can simply click on it. Sometimes I'll go to my layers panel and make sure that I have the correct thing selected, just in case there's some kind of grouping or something that's a little bit strange. And then instead of looking at my inspect, I'm going to go to the export panel instead. Here we can see the layer that I have selected. I'm going to click plus to create a new export. And usually the very first thing I do is open up this preview to make absolutely certain that I have the correct thing selected. Then you can change things like the resolution that you want to save this at. If it's 1x, then it will be the original resolution that's here. In our case, we can see over here it's 25 by 25 pixels. If you did need to scale this to a larger size, you would just go ahead and choose something larger like 1.5, 2, or 3x. Just keep in mind that the larger you export this as, the more space this icon will take up in the file system, and therefore if you're loading this on a web page, it might take longer for especially someone with a slower internet connection to actually download these files. So there's usually a sweet spot where it will render looking really nice on the page, but it won't be too large of a file. Once you've determined the size, let's maybe set this to 2x. You can also change the format that you want to export this as. In my case, I usually prefer to export something as a PNG unless I plan to make some kind of code changes to it, in which case I might use an SVG. I'm going to stick with a PNG for this example. And then you can simply click the export button and save this to your hard drive. Once it's saved to your hard drive, you can move that into your project files and use it like you normally would. Awesome. Now, there's a million things that you can do in Figma. Obviously, it's a super capable program, especially if you're on the design side, actually creating the designs that you see. 
However, as a developer, it's relatively straightforward. I'd say probably 95% of what I do as a developer in view only mode with Figma is what I've talked about here. But just like any new technology or program, just play around with it and you'll become familiar with it pretty quickly. And with that, you should be ready to hit the ground running using Figma in your development. I'm Bob Zarol. Cheers and happy coding.